Did you know that the very first cellular network was rolled out in 1979? And from that first installation in Japan, it made its way over to the U.S. by March of 1983. Oh yes, good old 1G. It had its issues. The sound quality was poor, the coverage really wasn't all that much better, and support for roaming? Forget about it. Now, for most of us around the world, 1G is a far-off memory. We've got 5G to contend with. And we need it. With the advancement of smart traffic systems, the proliferation of robust video surveillance, and the sheer amount of connectivity that each area of our society demands these days, 5G in both private and public networks is more important than ever before. And that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Andrew Chen from Advantech and I investigate how we can revolutionize connectivity with 5G in public and private networks. We explore the role that 5G plays in autonomous vehicles, smart traffic systems, and public safety infrastructure, and the solutions that Advantech offers in this arena. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Advantech. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome. Pleasure to be here. Excellent. So we're talking about how we can revolutionize connectivity with 5G in public and private networks today. But Andrew, before we get started, can you give us a glimpse into how these two kinds of networks differ? Sure, absolutely. Here I list down some of the differences. The first about the, who's the owner of it. For the public cellular, the owner will be like all big carrier like AT&T, Verizon. But for the private, Usually, they will have a certain service provider to provide this kind of private network. Sometimes we will see like Ericsson or some of different vendor for that. The big difference is for the public cellular that all the people can entry into the same network as long as you're in the internet. But for the private, you can have the higher security. So you can have your access to it. You can decide who can access to your cellular network which means you can have higher security. For the use cases, usually the private cellular will have specific use case, like uh, smart factories, healthcare, utility, this kind of industrial grade use cases. But for the public, it's like all the other, that like when you're using the cell phone, when you entry to the shopping mall, there's a lot of places you can use. That makes sense. Now, Andrew, reliable communication in these networks is a critical area to look at, right? Especially with the addition of more smart traffic systems and autonomous vehicles, correct? Yes. So when we look at the 5G, demand came from the transportation, specifically intersection. Because nowadays there are more and more camera on it, even with high resolution. For the traffic control center, they need to receive the real-time data for the video so that they can control the traffic signal or the message sign so that once there's a situation like a car accident in some heavy traffic intersection, the center, they can respond immediately. With the 5G network, we have the low latency and it can help them to respond fast and efficiently. Okay, so Andrew, what kind of components and functionality are we looking at when it comes to these smart traffic systems? With this kind of smart traffic system, for the 5G router itself, of course you need to have the 5G. But sometimes we still have some issue with the 5G base station. Sometimes it's so crowded, so the router itself needs to have the 4G backward. And in many situations that it also requires to have the Wi-Fi features because in this example here, uh, the end user, they use the Wi-Fi access point to get the videos from the different camera and they can send the data to the router by the Wi-Fi. And then with this router, it also provides the PoE feature, which it can provide to the power to the camera directly. 
So nowadays that in different intersection, they have tons of sensors, camera, and with the fast cellular communication, we can achieve this kind of smart intersection system. So do you have an example in this area that you can share? And this example is in North America. We have different states, like maybe California, Miami, and we have like CCTV, traffic counting, traffic signal management. So for them, they are not only using the cellular, they are also using the fiber because sometimes the fiber port, they still have the risk to have the disconnection. So the user will use our cellular router, which provides the fiber port. They can use as a network backbone and then use the 5G network as a backup plan. So with that, they can achieve like different network topology in the transportation department and provide a fulfilled whole network demand. And even more, they also have the first net certification on that. So Andrew, can we talk a bit about public broadband networks? There's a 5G network dedicated to public safety, right? Yes. We have the subdication called FirstNet, also named as First Response. For this one, it's specific from the North America after the 911 situation, because during that time, everyone wanted to call someone. But without the FirstNet, all the department, like a police officer, fire department, hospital, they cannot use the cellular network because uh, it's crash. So after that, the United States government decided, okay, we need to have something to ensure we have the reliable cellular network and we will allow this kind of critical situation with police officer, government, they can have a reliable cellular network. And then for this certification, it's not only the hardware itself, they also have the criteria for the device itself, connection-wise, like 5G network, also the cord, the hardware part, and last is the software part. So each of it is not only to provide a cellular network reliably, also for the security. So when we look at it into the 5G network, right now, like a public transportation, urban transit systems, even with the emergency supplier. So a lot of the end user, they are moving to the first net. Because every time it's there's a critical situation happen, we need to have a secure line to, you know, call the police department or even to the like government agent or hospital. So 5G also plays a role in CCTV applications as well, right? Yep. So for the CCTV, just like we mentioned in the transportation, but CCTV have another direction for that. In this CCTV, many cellular router from us that we support the PoE feature, so we can provide the power for that. And with a 5G network, it can provide a faster data transmission, lower latency. That is really important. And also we can increase the network capacity in order to have the real-time streaming, higher resolution. This is the one that the 5G cellular router play an important role. So I would imagine that 5G networks are also important for video surveillance applications as well. So once you have the CCTV in the video surveillance, more and more service providers also implement the AI-driven video to the business. Now user or the like a control room, they can have real-time response. So with the AI-driven solution, it will have higher cellular requirements and also low latency. In the Netherlands, they're using over 300 5G cellular routers, and they're using the PoE feature for the surveillance. And also they have the AI features on that. That makes sense. So what about private networks? Can we look at those as well? Sure. There is a specific band called CBRS. So it's between 3250 to 3700 megahertz, also called band 48. So it is crucial for private cellular networks for several reasons. First one is the shared spectrum. It allows different entities to utilize the same frequency bands without causing interference. And second is a dynamic uh, spectrum access. It can also have the feature like a PAL, priority access license, and GAA, 
general authorized assets. So for this tool, we can provide more flexibility and adaptability. Then lastly, it's common to use in the private cellular because compared to the public, you can have a certain band specific to use and you don't need to worry about other users to connect to your cellular network. Usually the 5G cost is even higher when you choose to use the private network. The security is the main reason. When we look at it like battery energy storage system, solar power management, or even the intelligent energy management. So those are the critical parts. When we're talking about the energy management, if we have anyone other like Hector, they wanted to access to our system through the network by cellular, it is really high risk because they can shut down the whole entity and cause a lot of money lost. That is another reason in this field that many users choose to use the private one. We can have a lot of benefit like uh, reliability, higher capacity, uh, more efficiency. And also the customization is also another reason that we can have more flexibility to design what the customer needed. Okay, so Andrew, what would a use case look like for these kind of private data networks? Yeah, so for us, we are seeing a lot of customer or end users, they already implement into a storage facility, automated production line, or even a water pump, water switch. Because for that, we can have a dedicated local 5G cellular network, real-time process control, and also the low latency and uh, ultra high speed. Okay, so Andrew, what kind of solutions does Advantech offer here? Yeah, we have our high-end model ICR4461. So it is 5G and 4G backward. We also implement the core-core CPU and with a uh, memory for it. And they also come with the Wi-Fi 5, uh, 11 AC features. We provide a full port POE solution, also with a one additional SFP port, which is fiber port. In that case, we have a lot of features for different use cases. No matter you want to use 5G, 4G, or Wi-Fi. Even with the interface, you have four giga port, one fiber port, also the serial port as well. And also, if you wanted to use the CBRS band, we have the band 48 as well. And lastly, I want to talk about the software part. So uh, because we use high-end CPU model, so we have core core, which allows you to support the Docker, Nora, even Python. So for some customers, sometimes they wanted to use different third-party software, or even sometimes they have their own management software platform. They can also use Docker feature to implement those software feature into our device. So uh, it's not only a 5G router, it's also a gateway, which allows you to do different things and achieve different purpose on it. So besides the 5G cellular router, we also have entry-level model, middle-level model. So if you wanted to use a simple 4G cellular router, it is also have more affordable option for you. So for all of our cellular router, we also can use the remote management software like DMP, device management platform, VPN. Also, we have our own MVMO SIM card solution. And then we also have our own web GUI ICROS. Lastly, we have our router app website in our Advantech cellular section. So there's a lot of protocol converter, like a mobile RTU to TCP, or if you want to use the MQTT, Python, even the Azure IoT SDK, then you can simply download it and implement into our cellular router. So from the software part, there's a lot of that you can use. No matter you wanted to use your own software implement to our hardware, or you wanted to use like a protocol converter or MQTT or Node-RED. So there's a lot of possibility for you. When we're talking about the 5G, it's not only the cellular network enhancement, it's also the whole network topology that what kind of the software you want to implement into this network. 
So with Advent Tech product, you can have both public and private cellular network, and also a lot of different possibility and capability with our hardware device. So thank you for listening. This is Andrew. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Andrew. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Advantech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.